Hey folks, we got a new champion on tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite, and we got a debut in wrestler. That and more. Uh, this is Kyle and Kevin, uh, and you're watching the Smack Draw podcast. What's up, y'all? It's Jay Thunder and AJ Raddix. And we are the PWX AWA Tag Team Champions, Extreme Thunder. Thunder. And you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast, baby. And we're back. Oh, Woo! boy, man. We are live. Yes, sir. What's up, Kevin? Chilling, man. Chilling. Uh, enjoyed uh, enjoyed Dynamite tonight for sure. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I'm enjoying that new uh, mic setup you got going over there. Oh, well, thanks, man. Uh, you know, um, uh, you, you got me the part, and it, <laughs> and it works like a fucking charm, you know? So. <laughs> Moving up in the world. Yeah. yeah. We actually can... Use microphones that aren't the stock laptop Windows 7 <laughs> microphone. Hey, yeah. man. Oh, yes. So we're here to we're here to talk about uh, AEW's Dynamite. Um, boy, man, what a show, man. What a show. They had, uh, they had quite a bit yeah. that went on tonight. Was it the craziest? I feel like this was the calm before the storm between for next week. Next week's show, I think, is going to be a banger. This week's show was good, though. Don't get me wrong. Um uh some personal highlights we had two title matches spoiler we got a title change in one of them um we had a shock debut man of a former uh well i think i think he's a former ring of honor champion he's a former olympian um all around beast uh yeah, yeah man that was good done a lot of work in uh new japan from what i understand too uh jeff cobb has yeah jeff cobb's the wrestler um, oh, sorry if I spoiled that. <laughs> hey, look, you you watch a recap show, you know, after you watch the show, presumably. That's, that's you know true. what that's I mean? Uh, but yeah, hey, if you guys haven't figured it out, man, we're, we're a pro wrestling podcast. Uh, we're streaming live right now to Facebook, Twitter, <clears throat> Twitch, and YouTube. Yes, we're still on my personal Twitch channel. This is not intentionally, man. Dragging my feed. There's some security issues, Kev. Like, if you change the platform that you're trying to launch Twitch on, they want so much verification. And I think our former host of AEW, Rob, I think he's the one who set it up. So I'm just, I'm having trouble logging in. I'm having trouble logging in. Um, well, we'll figure it out, man. You know? <laughs> Whatever. Hey, we're, we're also found on Podbean, Stitcher Radio uh itunes slash apple podcast google play music and of course my personal favorite spotify uh is where you can find the show amongst many other podcasting platforms um oh shoot man shoot i don't even know where to begin kev i'm kind of flustered over here i just had an <laughs> awesome night man uh yeah kev you know what i'll let you i'll let you do it. you know what we i normally always take the reins on this tell tell the people where they can chat with us at uh, well, you know, you can find the show at uh, Smack Draw Pod. Um, you can find myself at Kevin Crazy 316, and that's uh, crazy with a K. Um, you can find Kyle at the Kai Tai Show. Is that correct? That's correct, man. I, oh, I didn't even botch it. No. Uh, this is Twitter you know? he's mentioning, of course, too, by the way. Yes. I, I would hope so you I'm... guys would get that by the ad symbol. <laughs> Yes. Um, I believe now we have a Facebook page. Is that correct? Yeah, we, you can. F that's right, man. We, yeah, we're the uh, Smack Drop Podcast uh, Facebook page. Make sure to like us over there, and also I uh, find our Discord channel, uh, Smack Drop yes. Podcast Discord channel. We got some. We got some fun guys in there. Uh, you can talk with personally. I believe our entire crew is is in the Discord. Some more active mm -hmm. than others. Uh, Sebastian, always a blast in that Discord, yes. and then along with Colin as well. Those two guys will dive deep in some yep. wrestling storylines, conversations. Uh, yeah, make sure to hit us up there in, uh, in our Discord chat as well. They um, both seem to remember goddamn everything, too. I'm telling you, you they, know have, they have iron <laughs> traps of freaking memory. 
makes me feel like so unprofessional. I'll forget like I know. finishing moves and wrestler names on the fly, man. Those guys are good. They're good. I forget, you know, what happened 15 minutes ago, and they're talking about shit that happened a decade ago. I'm like, telling you. You know, it was no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, all right, so let's let's get into the show, man. Uh, AEW kicked off from, where were we? I think Austin, Texas. Yep. All right. right. Uh, yeah, they kicked off with the tag title rematch between Kenny Omega and Hangman Page taking on SCU. Honestly, man, I thought SCU were getting the titles back. So did I, man. That was a banger of a match. Holy shit. Before the match even started, we had the Dark Order cut a promo um, uh, backstage uh, saying the Exalted One is not far off, uh, which we uh, may have had a little bit of a spoiler alluded to uh, later in the show by a good old JR. I can't wait to talk about that, man. That's, That's got me tickled, man. I picked up right on it. But, uh, did. yeah, man, our Dark Order cut a promo before the match. The match was really clean cut. Uh, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, he took off before the match began saying, that you know, you know, I'll go find them. I'll, I'll help you guys. Commentary played this up well. They said, you know, that's, yep. you know, that's not really so clear and cut a loyal decision. You'd think that logic would dictate you'd, uh, you'd have your boys back around the ring. You know, you put your back against the wall, sort of say, instead of yep. run off and be vulnerable, especially when you're looking for a group of like, I don't know, like 15, 20 guys. Like, don't worry, yeah. I got this, boys. <laughs> well, well, not only that, I liked, uh, you know, when Evil Uno, when they came, I can't remember if it was when they came out or when they were still talking uh, backstage. He was talking about how, uh, you know, they have members everywhere and even closer than you think. Yes. So... Maybe he was alluding to the fact that Christopher Daniels is actually a member of the uh, Dark Order. That seems to be the big teaser. That, you know, so be interesting, man. They, yeah, I like um, I like that they just seem like they seem like uh, like a small fire that if you just you, you don't really pay too much attention to it because it seems harmless. But then if you just you turn your back for too long. That thing can grow out of nowhere, and before you know it, you're overwhelmed. And that's kind of like that's kind of what exactly. I want the Dark Order to be: is that danger. You don't take them too seriously right away, but then out of nowhere, you're just going to get this "oh shit" moment, and the whole yeah. script is going to be flipped. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do like that danger. Uh, back oh, to sure, yeah. Back to the match though. Uh, the the um, SCU Kenny Omega and Hangman Page had a straightforward match. Uh, Kenny yeah. and, and Hangman. We're on the same page, no pun intended, the whole time. Uh, SCU, man, they were hitting some of their big spots. They learned from some of their previous mistakes uh, in the title match beforehand. Ultimately, though, the Omega and Page hit the, what were you say, like the buckshot V-trigger is kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, kind of reminds me of like the high-low, you know, undisputed But they both era. go high. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's nasty, man. Um, yep. I did like uh, I did like that. It's not such a clear, clean win either because you had yeah. you had um, Kazarian oh, ate the there pin. You go. Yeah, yeah. Kazarian ate the pin and grabbed the rope just as just after the three count, uh, leaving you to you know those kind of like sloppy things. You can't tell if it's intentional. If there's a botch, it leaves intrigue to it which i believe it was fully intentional like designed that way yeah but i like it though i like it yeah um yeah 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 because you because you're right it didn't feel quite like a totally clean victory Mm -hmm. so like it didn't make scu feel weak you know um even though they lost the match which i thought was important honestly because you know i mean they're one of the the top tag teams in a in a you know uh, promotion that's stacked with tag teams, you know. So, yeah, man. Uh, no, it's it's good, and like I said, it, it just it feels like when stuff feels like more gritty. Uh, mm-hmm. I like it. I think that was like one of the one of the things that um, WWE has working against it now. Like I said, I don't make no excuses. They they put on what feels like a hundred hours of programming every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to run through the motion sometimes, but they feel like a very clean cut, well-oiled thing. You feel like, it, it, so when you see these little differences, it catches your eye and it feels cool. It just feels different. You know, difference always Absolutely. can, can definitely be good. Uh, 
as the match was going on, they announced that, you know, the the winners obviously get to retain their titles, but the losers get tossed right back into the fire next week. Did you catch, I, I feel like I missed this. I want to say it's a tag team battle royal, not a tag team gauntlet, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I, I think, too, um, that all of the tag teams are involved in it. Literally all of them uh, in AEW. So it's going to be crazy. Hell yeah, man. Right. Um, so well, all of them except Hangman and obviously your Hangman, winners, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, so after the match, Dark Order came out, um, cornered SCU. Best friends came out, followed them. Angelico and Jack Evans came out as well. Uh, Jesus, the Butcher and Blade. I mean, everybody just came yeah. out to really give like that visual impact of the tag team battle royal that we're getting next week. Mm-hmm. My favorite part. JR, when the Young Bucks came out, said, uh, here come the Young Bucks or uh, the Bucks of Youth. And I was like, oh, yeah. shit, that's Matt Hardy. And that's and that's <laughs> obviously, <laughs> if you pay attention to the wrestling news, Matt Hardy has reportedly just wrapped it up with WWE. Yep. His contract ends in like the first week of March. Mm-hmm. That would clear him up. Uh, Because they have, like, the 90-day no-compete clause. So you got, what, March, April, May. So right in the beginning of summer, you could have a Matt Hardy debut. The only only issue I see here is people are rumoring that he's the exalted one. That would put off the reveal of the exalted one for almost a half a year, you know. Um, But, no, Matt Hardy's going to AEW, man. And I, oh, yeah. I am super optimistic what type of character work that guy's going to be able to do while he's over there. You think? Oh, that- it, well, he fits perfectly with the Dark Order, too, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Like, uh, even if he isn't the exalted one and somebody else is, he fits in, you know. Uh, maybe he'll be, you know, a mouthpiece for the exalted one or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. knows? So. I, I mean, either way, I'm into it. I hope they don't wait that long to reveal who it is, though, because you're right. I mean, that's a long fucking time. That is a very long time. Because <laughs> you you and I were talking about um, last week, I think it was, that uh, it might be Brody Lee because yeah. he's debuting in Manchester. Or not Manchester. Jesus. Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. Where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, where, where you're at. So, yeah. um, that would be interesting too. Like, I, I like, yep. I like it, man. I like the idea of just not knowing, um, but also having like this hype around it. I think AEW is about to get some major signings, uh, oh, which they which, have obviously. <laughs> yeah, which which they, I mean yeah. they're already doing it good. So, oh yeah, I I'm I'm just I'm excited to see where all of this goes. Uh, oh. Nothing really came of the Battle Royal, uh, or I mean, the, the all the tag teams coming out. Like I said, you had Young Bucks uh, pulling a high spot. They, they're jumping off the ropes on top of everybody. It was just more or less to serve the purpose of just showing off, like, just on, you know, honestly the deepest division that I think AEW has is their tag yep. division. And, uh, and, you know, to whet your appetite for next week, I feel like. Yeah. Too. yeah. So I'm way more hype about that match after that segment. That's for sure, you know. Oh, myself too. Myself. I, I'm I'm extremely hyped because not only that, you have um you have the cage match and then another match that was set up oh, later in the show as yeah. well. Those three matches alone right there, that's 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 a full night's programming in just the three matches. Hell yeah, and they're all pay per view worthy matches too, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Yeah, that's you know absolutely. So. Uh, all right, so Following this, okay, I missed part of it. Uh, I think I was out getting some food or something. But um, right Santana sat down with a uh, pre-taped interview with JR uh, for mm-hmm. their eye for an eye match with Moxley. I caught the ass end of this. Pretty much okay. I, I, from what I – the commentators filled in the gaps for me, which they just said um, he's not taking responsibility for what happened with Moxley or something. It was just a straightforward, intense interview. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, Santana went into uh, something about his dad, like, being blind or something like that, like, when he uh, was really young. So he knew what it was like for his world to be dark, and he wanted to show Moxley what it was like, you know. (laughs) So there was 
There was a little shit talking, but it was, yeah, I mean, it was pretty straightforward. He was just like, well, Moxley should have joined the inner circle. If he'd have done that, we wouldn't have gouged his eye out, basically. So, pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's Moxley's yeah, it fault. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel you. I mean, it was good. It was cool. It was intense. It just, you know, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. Right, and I that's, that's kind of like the feeling I had for it. I mean, why would you give a heel that type of interview anyways? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, next up, I did catch this. This was pretty fun. The Darby Allen video. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so it's another black and white vignette, but this time from like the first person perspective. And Darby Allen has like a bunch of tattered signs um, with uh, essentially just handwriting on them, similar to what Sammy Guevara does during the picture in picture segments. Yeah. And um, he just walks through talking trash. And you can hear him like clearing his throat and semi choking, selling that uh, throat injury he got. But um, yep. at the end, it looks like he's challenged Guevara to a match at Revolution. And then, gimme, 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 gimme. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you what you think of that sign that said Guevara got herpes from kissing Jericho's ass? Oh, I I I lost my shit. That was hilarious. Like yeah. I like, but there's there's a lot of people that are doing that too with uh, other members of the uh, inner circle, just talking shit, being like, you know, uh, you're only there because of Jericho, or you're you know a kiss ass essentially. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's is, everyone's riding Jericho's coattails in the inner mm -hmm. circle. Um, I like that. I like it, you know. Hey, man. That's what Cause I... it, you know, I mean, I feel like it paints Jericho as a bigger heel and shit like that, too, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, so. Absolutely, man. Yeah, man. He's, uh, Jericho's the man, though. Man in the oh. man. I can't, yeah. I can't wait. Like, I'm hoping that whoever gets that belt off him, which would probably be Moxley, can keep the same level. Because that belt feels huge with Jericho. Like, he feels huge with that thing, man, mm -hmm. um, which is funny because, I, I mean, granted, some people discredit that. You know, they'll say, you know, Jericho's old, like WWE has been, and you're going to have those typical haters. But I'm sorry, man. That dude brings star power. And wrapping that nice-ass belt around him, which he's already a rock star persona anyways, so he's already flashy. It's just, it's a match made in heaven. And it's big shoes to fill for whoever uh, whoever follows him. You yep. know, very big shoes to fill. Yep. Uh, I think I think Moxley can do it. I think Omega can do it. Yep. Um, those are the two people that come to mind right away. Some other people I wouldn't mind being champ. I don't think they'd be they'd bring quite the hype behind it though. Like is like Pack, Hangman Page. Yep. Uh, but yeah, definitely Moxley or uh, Omega for sure can be huge with that belt. I think too. Um, I feel like uh, Cody could, but I think a lot of people would uh, shit on him for it after, yeah. you know. But I feel like if he they do something kayfabe wise to get him back into that picture, he could totally do it too, you know. Well, I think the problem isn't just uh, with the kayfabe; he can't challenge for the title anymore. Is is the every? It's so out there that he's the one running the show. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like when Vince McMahon put the belt on him. Now, granted, Vince McMahon was not a pro wrestler from a huge lineage of pro wrestlers, but right. you know what I mean. You still have that. You you still have that very vulnerable spot where it's like, yeah, he booked himself. It wasn't that he proved up to the brass. You know what I yeah. mean? It was like he rode himself as champion. Um, yeah, which is just that. It's that's that awkward thing, man. When you have the um, Granted, it's not like to the degree of the NWO and everything, but I mean, it is still technically the inmates running the asylum, you know, yeah. and so you're going to have those little issues. And that's why I think Cody, just for me, just that reason alone, um, I would have an issue with him being champ. I wouldn't hate it. No, but it wouldn't I, I, it that's, would, it'd feel weird. No, that's that's totally legit. And I, and I hear you there, too. I, just, I mean, as far as like, you know, star power and shit like that. And just how over he is in uh, AEW right now. And what he's, you know, willing to do to sell shit. Like, I mean, the, the, uh, the lashes he took last week. I mean, Jesus Christ. No, That he, was, dude, you know. That was, yeah. That's him giving back to the business right there. Like, yep. hey, I'm not just the boss. I'll go ahead and 
put myself out there. Oh god, that's still that's still so nasty. Like, What's what I mean? If he keeps doing shit like that, and uh, you know, they can figure out a way to make it believable to get him back into the, uh, you know, the title picture, I think he'd be a great champion. But it would it would have to you'd have to handle it carefully. Do you think you could do a Do you think you could do a story where uh, he gets kind of stripped of his stock? You know, where it's like they they just bring that to the forefront, like hey. You know, we uh, investors, whatever reason, the the boardroom battle uh, strips him away from his ability to book and and ownership in the show. Uh, they did the same thing to Vince at one point. I think the Authority did yeah. back in the day. They they I think they you're right. deemed him like not mentally capable of of running the business or whatever, and they took away Vince's ability. You know, so do you think? Um, because I feel like that would be the story that would play out first. Yeah, you're no longer the boss. We're taking Tony. You know, Tony Khan doesn't mind being on TV, but look, I'm right. firing you as an executive, but I'll keep you on as a talent. You yeah. know, and then who? That knows? would make sense. Yeah, yeah. I, could, I could totally see that. And you know, um, like you said, I think you know Tony Khan would totally be into uh, you know uh, on air personality like that. We already um, see him little bits here and there. He was on. Right. He was on Dynamite tonight. Whenever uh, the yeah. first the the next match was it the next match? No, 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 no. The the no that was the halfway through was the Nyla Rose match. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll have to get back into it. Let's get back on track though here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had a, a heads up match: Dusty Rhodes taking on Sammy Guevara. Dusty Rhodes, former Gold Dust, of course, uh, hometown boy here. God, dude, the crowd loves some Dusty. I, I don't. I don't think it's just being hometown. Everybody loves Dustin Rhodes, man. Gold yep. Dust. It's, dude. He's been doing it as long as the Undertaker. That's that's the thing. Yeah. He just yeah. Has, he hasn't been like the main guy, but he's been doing it just as long. He's been on TV just as long. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, man. Uh, him and Guevara have a hell of a good match. Hager. Oh, yeah. Hager's outside being constant threat. Um. Dustin comes away with the victory. I think this is his second time beating Sammy Guevara in a singles match. I think match. you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Uh, he hits him with a, uh, a Panama Sunrise or Canadian Destroyer um, into the final reckoning. Uh, picks up the victory. Best part, though, wasn't even the match. It was the post-match. I know. Yo, he, you got Guevara and, um, and Hager walking up the ramp in defeat. Dustin Rose yells out, turn around. Camera pans over, Sammy turns, and uh, Dustin yells at him. He's like, not you. And then, of I course, know. prompts Dust uh, Hager to turn around. Or no, he says, not you, Jericho's bitch. And <laughs> yeah. So good. So good. Yeah, man. <laughs> he hit him with that line. He said, you ever going to get in the ring or are you just uh, going to keep collecting a paycheck? I know. And then uh, hit that also. He said, you're failing at MMA and you'll fail here. Before you get ever in the ring, do some scathing sus stuff from Dustin Rhodes, man. I know. Um, I know. Have you followed uh, Jake Hager MMA stuff by any chance? No, but you, I think you told me about it one time a while ago. Like he was in Bellator. Is that he correct? He still is. He still is. Oh, he still is. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're feeding him tomato cans. They're feeding him like essentially nobodies. Okay. Uh, the, now the guys obviously have more MMA experience than him but they're out of shape overweight oh. just tomato cans they're, they're they're essentially real life jobbers and um <laughs> it's true though it's true and yeah. in the, the last match he had he won uh well he didn't technically win it was a no contest because he needed the dude in the dick and oh, the guy Jesus. the guy couldn't continue because you have that beast of a man jake hager full-on like freaking Falco kneeing you in the balls, bro. Like you done. So yeah, yeah. I had a I had an issue with <laughs> AEW hyping up. He's undefeated. Well, yeah, but when you go and take it into further context, like he hasn't accomplished anything yet outside of just getting in the ring and not you know not eating a yeah. a loss yet. But but yeah. So I thought that was cool. Bring that up a little bit. Um, for sure. For yeah, sure. Man. So you are you officially hyped for a Jake Hager match in 2020? Uh, uh, against Dustin at Revolution? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking A, man. I mean, that's 
that's been a that's been a rivalry that's been a real good slow burn you yeah. know uh yeah uh it, I, I it's ready to it's ready to burst give it to me man i want it so <laughs> bad you know what if i told you back in 2018 go back to 2018 be like hey man there's going to be a pay-per-view and one of the biggest matches is going to be jack swagger taking on gold does and you'd be like who the well, fuck cares <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Somehow, man, a that AEW magic. Yep. That AEW magic, man. They know what they're doing over there. Well, they got lucky too, though, really, and they took advantage of it because you know Jake uh, Jake uh, broke his arm too, you know, and they've been uh, using the shit out of that, which is, I mean, smart, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they really capitalized on a on that situation. Long term booking, man. Long term yeah. booking. I I think that's been intentional. I think oh, they set that sure. up, set that up way ahead of time. Knew exactly what they were going to do. Like, no one's going to care at first for Jake Hager when we pop him on the scene. He's going to go over like a wet <laughs> fart. No one's going to care. But you, you know, you break Dusty's arm. You constantly, you know, we build up your comedy stuff here and there to make you a little bit more likable. But we don't get you in the ring. We don't actually give anybody that taste, and it kind of just gets people antsy. And it's yep. they've done it perfectly, cause dude. Oh yeah. Even when he debuted, you were like, "Who cares? It's Jack Swagger." Yep. You know what I mean? But now yeah. we're like, "Yes, I can't wait for him to get in the ring." Like AEW, well, man, the smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, he's mostly just been Jericho's bodyguard essentially too. So you know, it's been solid heel booking. You know, because uh, mm-hmm. fucking everybody hates him. You know, <laughs> uh, so it's it's been good. You know. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, it's been it's been good. Uh, following that, though, we had a, uh, a interview at the top of the ramp. Tony Schiavone interviews Britt Baker. Mm-hmm. Boy, man, talk about turning it around in a segment. Because Britt Baker came out, sounded dumb as hell. I'm not going to lie, man. Her whole thing with Yuka, uh, um, Shivani going, you know, explain yourself. And her whole thing, I gave her free dentistry. She starts going into, like, like officially the like talking about exactly what tooth it was and you know like all dentist spot dentist talk uh and everything and and just like i did her a freebie you know i extracted yeah. that tooth for free i like she should thank me bullshit but when she turned on shivani brought up the starbucks stuff again and we get another <laughs> like really annoyed shivani face which is gold every time oh yeah uh oh, yeah. and then she went after the crowd and I don't even know who she went after. I, I know she probably went after their sports team or whatever. She got that crowd turned on her big time. Perfect. They yeah. booed the piss out of her. Well, I mean, she's she's had a big turnaround like the last three or four weeks as far as I'm concerned. Because I was like so uh, like less than lukewarm on her for a long time, you know. And lately, like... I, she's just been killing it, you know, uh, at least in the promos anyway. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, she got the crowd to turn on her like that, you yeah. know. She she knows how to, like, her and Tony Schiavone apparently have incredible chemistry, you know. They do. Uh, <laughs> yes, they do. It's, <laughs> you know, yeah, and it's they're funny and it's good and believable. Uh, I would take one of those every week. You know, the Shivani Britt Baker. Uh, I want to see him fucking snap. Like, I want to <laughs> see him snap, dude. Get in her face. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I'm sick of you, man. <laughs> He's like, just yeah. trying to feed my I family. I don't work at Starbucks anymore, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, man. You could have, like, her have, like, a male companion who comes out and beats up Shivani. And that gets even more yeah. heat on her and, and whoever <laughs> whoever decides to back her up. Um yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, be, that'd be cool, man. It'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think anything really came outside of that, though. That was just to remind people to hate Britt Baker. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Good reminder, though. Yeah, so. very good reminder. Um, <laughs> another good reminder was who our women's champion was, is Riho. Uh, mm-hmm. She had her title match against Nyla Rose and uh, for the yeah for the women's title. Uh, Rio got the crowd back behind her. You know, the crowd's been kind of yeah. pissing and moaning about her, but damn, when she t- puts on a good match, the crowd ate it up. Uh, yes. I, you know, I gotta be honest. I did too. Cause I've been a, I've been a detractor of Riho for, you know, a bunch of weeks now. Like even before when Rob and I were doing the show, we were like, 
she's just such, not a believable champion. <laughs> you know, that's that's what we kept saying. Um, you know, because of her size, which I feel kind of bad about because she can do it in ring. You know, she's mm-hmm. incredible. And, you know, like you were saying, I mean, she she got the crowd behind her like that, you know, like she did. She came out was, hot, man. That's that's yeah. that's always such a good baby safe baby face thing when you're the underdog is instead mm-hmm. of like waiting timidly, you just charge at the bull. Yep. Which obviously didn't work, but uh, <laughs> it was still it looks. Cool. I, it was, what yeah, the, I mean, what the it, was, hell was, it was respectable. Um, what was Nyla Rose thinking, though, breaking out the tables and stuff? You're in, yeah. a, you're in a championship match, and you you're openly trying to do stuff that gets you disqualified. Like it ain't like you're trying to hide it from the ref. You just that was that was a weird part. I could I could hear Sebastian yeah. complaining in my head. Uh, I could hear him nagging. I, was, I wasn't a fan of that part either. Yeah. Uh, maybe after the match, I would have yeah. you know. But yeah, not during the match. I thought that was stupid. Yeah, I mean, I get, like, during the match why it was done, because it was used as an opportunity for Riho to come back, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's kind of what it surfaced, was Riho, I think, launched off the table or something. Yep. It just didn't yeah, make she... sense for her to go for it from the get-go. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else was in there? Um, Riho, uh, yeah, Riho was pretty much grounded the majority of the match. Towards the end of it, though, she started coming back. Um, even though Nyla Rose is the larger and more dominant person, she was using those shortcuts. Like we said, trying to break out the table. She resorted to biting. Um, I know. Riho. Uh, I don't know if it was from the biting, but I didn't notice. Rio's mouth was busted open. And I didn't notice oh, that really? till after the biting had occurred. Yeah. Hmm. And, um, yeah, and then Nyla Rose, which this should be her damn finisher, hit an avalanche Death Valley driver. Like, yes. Yeah, dude, that is mean as hell, yep. bro. Um, but uh, yeah, she did hit the she hit the Death Valley driver. Uh, the crowd gets behind Rio because Rio's able to kick out, fight back. Rio hits a damn Northern Lights suplex, which I know. you either love that or you hate it. I could see you hating it because <laughs> realistically, if Nyla just sandbagged, you know Rio would break her back trying to lift her. But hey, no. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was all Nyla. That was all <laughs> let's, Nyla. Let's be Rose. honest. Yes. <laughs> but Riho did follow up with a three coup de gras or jumping foot stomps on Nyla Rose. Nyla selling the last one great, like trying to wave her off, like don't do it. But um, ultimately was not enough, man. Nyla got her foot on the ropes during the pin, which allowed her to at least get up. She hit a spear, hit a Batista bomb or a sit-down power bomb, if you will, for the win. She is now your uh, new and the second ever women's champion. This is only the second title change in AEW's history since inception, uh, mm-hmm. which is, is cool to think about. Um, yep. And Nyla Rose was in the original, the inaugural championship match, too. So yep. it's pretty cool. Um, after the match, there was a picture-in-picture picture segment. She was greeted backstage by, like, Tony Khan. You, I couldn't make out what she was saying, but she was pretty much telling Kenny Omega off because... Obviously, Kenny is the one who I believe recruited Riho. Yep. Well, I, I, according to commentary a few weeks too, like she uh, trained with him, like in Japan a whole bunch or something too. Yeah. So they've had a relationship for a while, apparently. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, she was telling him off in that picture in picture, and then what got me was it felt like the rest of the women's division was standing around just looking pissed off at Nyla Rose, but what yeah. really. What really I didn't like about this is there's like only six women. Like there's really <laughs> nobody. Know. They have you got you got Statlander, Britt Baker, um, Penelope, Ford. Mm-hmm. I think I don't even know if Bunny was in there. I think Bunny is in there. Um, I saw Leva Bates. Leva Bates yeah. and um, Big Swole back mm-hmm. there. That's it, man. Yeah. You know, um, Riho's not full time. Yuka is going to be written off for I don't know how long. I think Yuka is only going to come around once in a great while. I don't think she's going to be regular by any means, yeah. which sucks. I really like Yuka. Um, yeah. She reminds me of like like a character from like Final Fantasy X. Yes, I mean, thank you. That's exactly what I thought too. Yeah. I mean, maybe not specifically Final Fantasy X, but just like a Final Fantasy character in general. Yeah. Like just, just the like the clothes that she wears and shit and yeah. like her hair and yeah. stuff. It's Yeah, it's perfect. Definitely that, yeah. So mm-hmm. I was, uh, yeah. So they got really, I like nobody. 
And that is well, that is the uh, uh, Shida Hakura Shida. That's uh, right. Yeah. That's... I mean, but to be honest with you, though, I mean, I, I agree. Like, I feel like the only two women on that uh, roster that would be believable champions, especially after Nyla Rose, uh, would probably be either be uh, Statlander or Sheeta. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's it, really, as far as I'm concerned. You'd probably have to make Statlander heel, because then you could have Rose, Nyla Rose, and Statlander being the two big heels. Sheeta's going to be the big baby face, yeah. and then. Like I said, I guess if if um, Riho sticks around, Riho would be take the spot of the other big baby face. Yeah. But the issue you run into is you're gonna run out of matchups. The same yeah. the same women are just gonna face each other week in and week out, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, they got to do something about getting this uh, the depth going. I don't hate on the I've seen some of the bad matches, and yeah, granted, it is the weakest point of AEW, but by no means they have they have. You know they'll, they'll get it done. I believe it. Oh, they still have talent. I mean, yeah. Jesus, that that championship match tonight was a banger. That yeah, was the crowd really was good. Hot. Yeah, they yeah, were they was... were easily the loudest. I think of the night, um, as far as uh, the in ring action, they got like this is awesome and all that stuff. Uh, yep. I think it'd be a toss up between them and the Jungle Boy MJF match. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the crowd was hot all night, though. Really, I mean, all the matches there was you know chants and shit going on. It was a really, really good crowd in Austin, I thought. Yeah, kudos to you, Austin. Kudos to you. Um, I guess uh, following that, then we get the bombshell, which we alluded to at the very beginning of the show we spoiled, which is uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Hardy. Jesus, now I want to say Jeff Hardy. <laughs> Chris Jericho. <laughs> uh, he dropped the bomb that he has scouted an assassin for Moxley next week. Uh, Jeff Cobb. Uh, yes. Man, a beast of a man. But yeah, yeah. so... It's a scheduled match after the uh, the main event, which is Moxley and Santana. You got Jeff Cobb coming out to to face Moxley. That's oh boy, that's an uphill battle for sure. Even again, yep. even with a one hundred percent Moxley, that's yeah. a very uphill battle. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm stoked to see how that plays out. From what I gather, though, Cobb has not signed with AEW. He's just doing a couple dates. So. <laughs> Because you know, like AEW, like they they like to hop on social media and Twitter and everything, and they'll like throw up the superstar, or the wrestler, and be like, "This person is all elite," and that's why Cobb is uh, still hasn't been gotten that that shine yet, even though he's yeah. been announced. Uh, coming up, well, I hope he hope he signs, man, because I love Jeff Cobb. Like he was, uh, you know, towards uh, I was watching Ring of Honor quite a bit for a while like before it turned really shitty yes <laughs> and he was like one of the huge bright spots uh on the roster like his he's yeah i can't wait i was no i'm i'm, I'm just checking to make sure our stream is working on youtube but no i was gonna ask you uh yeah is uh, so what are some of his accomplishments all i know is i believe he's a former ring of honor champion i don't really know I, much beyond that I think he wasn't like the he was the like the mid card champion there. Like, I think television champ. I think is what it is in Ring of Honor. Okay, um, but he went on like a humongous undefeated streak there, like something like thirty matches or something insane. Um, I mean, he's done a lot of work in New Japan, um, from what I understand. I mean, Sebastian was talking about um, him and Moxley did have a match uh, at the G One tournament. Okay, uh, last year um, and. Sebastian seemed to really like it. Uh so you know Okay, okay. I so sh- he's well traveled, like and he's very yeah. well done. The the crowd the crowd instantly was shocked as hell once they once he the announcement was made. Like that crowd oh, was very audibly. Yeah. And I, I've always yeah. known that he's a big deal. I just I personally don't think I've seen much of him. Maybe like a new Japan match and then like a Ring of Honor highlight, but I've okay. uh, yeah, I've never actually got to sit down and learn the character or nothing. Um, right. On. So yeah, I can't wait to see him next week, man. See what this guy's about. Uh, oh, he's a beast. <laughs> he is a beast. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, MJF and Jungle Boy Jack Perry had their match afterwards. Yes. Match was hot once again. Like I said, I think it's a toss up for match of the night between the women's championship match and this one. Uh, mm-hmm. MJF working great heel stuff. Uh, Jungle Boy, man, he's 
He is just the just the can doer who can't. I'm telling yeah, you, know. man. Like this guy is so <laughs> bad for he's him. so good, but always loses. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for him too, man. I feel bad too because uh, it's so easy to root for him too. You know, it's just like you want him to win so bad, and then hmm. he just he always just like misses the mark just by a little tiny bit you know and it's God yeah damn, man. i can't i can't wait for that kid to get his hands on the tag titles and see some oh, gold yeah. on him that's gonna be a hell of a day um, him and Luch- luchasaurus all yeah. day give it to me give it to me give it to me yeah oh yeah uh so what do you think of uh brandy on commentary um i like her better as a baby face honestly yeah. Um, I, the nightmare, I'm glad, so glad they're done with that nightmare collective bullshit. Yeah. Cause like, it was just so unbelievable to me. Um, I, I mean, I wasn't, I don't think she was great by, by, uh, any stretch of the imagination, but she was definitely, uh, passable. You know, it wasn't like she detracted from anything, but okay. there was like, it wasn't any like huge wow moments you know, uh, for me on commentary, uh, tonight, but like when she was on before, like when she was talking all that shit about Excalibur and shit like that, it was just stupid. It felt really hokey. And she had to apologize for that when she first came out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They were like, yeah, water under the bridge, Brandy. Okay. We'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. They could have dropped like a little hint. I don't know. Like, cause so the nightmare collective that hasn't been acknowledged on TV, has it? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I read uh, I read uh, part of an interview with uh, Brand yesterday or today, earlier today, where she was saying that they they did drop it and um, showing that they did on TV was like when she came out uh, in support of Cody last yeah. week, uh, you know, when he was getting the lashes, which makes a lot of sense. Right. You know? Yeah. I uh, so I was talking a little bit on Raw about it. Um it's it's kind of weird when you have it's hard to say so i don't know if it's i don't know if if you could say it's the fans reaction directly impacted it um you'd have to think backstage they knew anyways that it was just but um i guess i i don't hate that they dropped it by no means because it was it was a very it was pretty much i think the largest low light of any show it was on like, oh yeah. It yeah. was going over like a lead balloon. And nobody <laughs> fucking liked it. You know? It was it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got nervous though, because my, my gut reaction was like, oh God, you know, I get you have to listen to the fans and you know but then again they did give it time to breathe. They did try to give it some time to breathe. They didn't just drop it after like two weeks. I mean they did drag it yeah. on for a couple months, I think. And um yeah, and I guess yeah, that's good. I, I initially was just like, oh, God, don't do, like, the knee-jerk stuff that WWE can do at times because, for one, people will never be happy. You know what I mean? But in this case, in this case, I'm I'm not going to even make it begin to sound like I felt like the it should have kept going. But I wouldn't have minded seeing a conclusion to it. Like, I wouldn't yeah. have minded seeing, like something, some story role wrapping it up, whether it's like, hey, look, you know... <laughs> I feel like we're about to join the Dark Order or like, like this is just getting pretty sick. All right. Like I thought I'd be into collecting people's hair, but you know, like, like Cody's looking at me funny, something like that. I don't know, man. They could have, they could have just acknowledged it a little bit more on TV, but hell it's, it's done and over with. It's a thing of the past and that's cool. And like you said, Brandy as a face, um, works better anyways. Oh, Uh, this is miles better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, the like going back to the match, um, you had uh, MJF at one point <laughs> yelled out to Brandy. Uh, you know, you could have a real man and like gestures his crotch. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Wardlow comes out. He slips on uh, what, what's it called the what the what ring the 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 oh, Jesus. the diamond something ring the I can't yeah. remember. It's it's MJF's ring. Wardlow passes it to him. He strikes Jack Perry with it while the ref is distracted and then uh, ends up picking up the win after the crossroads. <clears throat> Some good stuff. Wardlow, yep. Wardlow gets his hands dirty, too, after the match. Delivers a fucking F5. Like, dude, like... Yeah. All right. Was, yeah. 
He, that was an F5, man. He just did like a little airplane spin beforehand, but it was a damn F5. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Wardlow's, <laughs> Wardlow's the official Brock Lesnar of, uh, <laughs> of AEW. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, at least he's going to have a match on TV next week. Know? I can't wait, man. Yeah. yeah oh, I, I can't wait yeah. to see how that goes because we don't even know anything about him. I don't personally. I don't either. Nope. Just just from what he's done in uh, AEW. Yeah. Honestly. So. Oh, it's going to be dope, man. It's going to be so cool. Uh, oh, and yeah. first cage match. That alone is going to be getting me hype. Uh, I'm, <laughs> put it this way. I'm way more hype for that cage match than I am in the, Ro- Roman, the Roman Reigns. Uh, Baron <laughs> Car- yeah. The Baron like, Corbin one. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. God. Oh, excuse me. I just had a little bit oh, of you're all right. kind of burp there. I wasn't sure if I should trust it or not. Uh, <laughs> just projectile vomit all over the Jesus place. Jesus Christ. Not on this laptop. <laughs> Um. Yeah, <laughs> Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt, they come out. I'm glad. I was worried, man, when Wardlow put his hands on Jack Perry. I was like, oh, don't do that stupid thing where your partners and friends just were too busy at catering or whatever to come save your ass. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Luchasaurus and, and, and uh, Marco Stunt come out, run off, at, run off MJF and uh, Wardlow. It was pretty good. Um, yeah. What would you think of this pack promo, dude? Um... I was into it, you know. Um, it kind of reminded me almost of like uh, the same kind of vibe as like the uh, Darby Allen stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, but I think it fits, you know, Pac really well. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm into Pac. Uh, what uh, Kenny Omega next week? Right? They're having that match next week. I think in two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, so yeah, I think that's so- two weeks from now. Okay, so like the the going home show for uh, Revolution. I believe okay. that's yeah, I believe that's what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That was yeah. I like that. I like that pack. Um, a lot of uh, Kenny Omega's criticism is that he isn't the Omega that was in New Japan. Yeah. And Pack kind of touched on that in the promo and said that you know when I choked you unconscious, you haven't been the same since then. Um, kind of giving some legs to that. You know, I like it when you take. You take real life stuff and acknowledge it and then try to wrap some story in it, you know, because yep. it helps blur the lines and makes it more believable. And that's because that is one of the <clears> criticisms <throat> like Kenny Omega coming into AEW. He's coming off of arguably the best trilogy in wrestling history with Okada putting right. on like six and seven star matches, you know, and yet now he's losing matches to Chris Jericho. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, and stuff. <laughs> and so it was it was kind of weird. And so to to try and just chalk that up to Pac choked him unconscious on, you know, uh network television, I think uh I think it was pretty pretty smart idea. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. so finally we got to our main event, Moxley and Santana with uh Ortiz at ringside and um Jericho Hager and Sammy Guevara are up in like the private box, skybox, whatever. Um, pretty much they're in the crowd. This match was good. <laughs> Battle of yes. the Cyclops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was cool. I like. I like this. I did not expect the story, and it's so obvious too. Yeah, they spent the time trying to take out each other's good eye because they both I had know. one eye. <laughs> yes, it's. You had each other. Uh, yeah, it may, I, I, I can't believe I didn't think of that, but you're right. Like. <clears throat> It made perfect sense. It was, I mean, brutal, you know, and I, yeah, and it was so goddamn obvious too. Like it I was. just can't believe that. Like you didn't expect it beforehand. Yeah. No, it was. Moxley had his own. Um, I don't know if it's official merchandise. I should have checked before we started showing, but he had his own custom eye patch that he threw into the crowd. Did you notice yeah. that when he came out? Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> go, to, go to go uh, to wrestlingtees dot com and get your official <laughs> Moxley eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, there are gonna be people um, at these shows going forward wearing eye patches. Oh, hundred percent in support of Moxley, man. Yeah, yeah it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's stupid wrestling merch. I'm telling you. What's yeah? what's some of the worst wrestling merch that you could wear? Um, what you got? You uh, got New Day's uh, unicorn horns. Fucking hated that. Yeah. Um. I, silly. I get it, but hated that. Um. I'm sure some wrestlers had wigs. Like. Oh I'm, yeah. I'm positive they had some wigs. Uh. Towels. I don't know, I'm trying. Ah. 
I guess yeah. Cena I mean, ain't that bad. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. No, the, the Enzo. Like, couldn't you get like Enzo's hair at I, one point? I, I think you could. I think you could get Enzo Amore's hair piece. That's the wig I'm thinking of. Because he had the stupid as fuck. Yeah, so. dude. Okay, <laughs> that takes it right there. The Enzo yeah. hair. Yeah, I'm actually hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google the shit out of that real quick. <laughs> at least the the Moxley eye patch is like topical and it makes sense. Like, but yeah, I hear you. It's kind of. I mean, it's dumb. <laughs> Either way. Oh yeah. Let's see. But no, I'm a uh, Enzo hair for merch <laughs> over here. Trying to see, you could get it, right? You could get it. The uh, the Enzo I can't, I would be surprised if you couldn't at this point. Or they they probably put it on their store like after the show. Didn't expect Moxley to do that, and now they're like, "Holy shit, we can make money yeah. on." This. Oh yeah, yeah. So you definitely could. Yeah, it was a G. It was a G headband, and it had like fake ass blonde hair. Jesus Christ! Oh God, there it is. There it is. I don't know if you can see it on my end. Nah, you can't see. It's all blown nah. out. But yeah, yeah. No, you could definitely, you could definitely buy the certified G <laughs> hairpiece. God damn, dude, that's so terrible. How stupid is that? That's so bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> Good God. Oh boy. Oh man. Anyways, uh main event was awesome. At one yes. point, uh Moxley was on the top ropes. Ortiz comes up and spits liquor into Mox's good eye. That's when it dawned on me. I was like, oh damn, now we got a blind Mox. Um mm-hmm. at one point I think also uh, Santana was trying like to like gouge Moxley's eye off the ring steps as well. Mm-hmm. Um so Moxley's essentially blind, but Ortiz uh, no, Santana is dumb as hell and starts grappling with him. If 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 a man is blind, don't grapple, strike him. Don't, right. don't grapple with the guy because you can grapple blind as hell. And that's what happened. Um, uh, Santana was trying to grapple with him, and Moxley was able to figure out where his head was and gouged his eyes. I really wish they could have played up the blind, uh, blind man versus blind man, just a little bit longer. <laughs> Maybe know. have one of them almost strike a referee or something. But... Uh, Ultimately, Moxley found Santana while they were both blind. Hits the uh, paradigm shift for the win. Um, super clever, man. Clever stuff yeah. for this match. Gotta love it. Inner circle, they descended onto Moxley afterwards, though. They beat the piss out of him. They whipped him with that blackjack. Jericho was hitting him with that AEW title. Slow your roll, Jericho. That mm-hmm. belt's like $28,000, okay, man? You don't need to be slinging it over people. But, um... Hager hit him with a low blow. Jericho got him with a Judas effect. And then uh, ultimately, uh, we got an early taste of Jeff Cobb. He he closed the show hitting the, yeah. what is it called? The Tour of the Islands? Yeah. 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 That, yep. Oh, man. Hit that. Nasty. Yeah, it's a hell of a, it's a hell of a move. It's like, a, it's kind of like a over-rotated, like, power slam. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the way I would probably describe it, too. Yeah, man. It was dope, uh, dude. My favorite part of that match, though, is like right after uh, Moxley is, is blind and he's like standing in the middle of the ring. Like, try- well, I guess maybe it wasn't quite in the middle of the ring, and he's trying to find uh, Santana, and he's just like turning around and shit, and like flailing his arm yeah. around. That was awesome. He was selling it like a motherfucker. Just, it was so good. Just throwing in the dark, man. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, good, really good match. I mean, the whole show, top to bottom tonight, was it was solid. It was really, really good. Uh, you know, um, I don't, I don't think we got anything that was like in, you know, crazy groundbreaking or something that we didn't really expect or anything like that. Just really solid storytelling and cool stuff that happened. Probably the women's title change is what I would say. You th- I was not surprised by that at all. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I saw that coming a mile away. Yeah, but what I meant is I think that was like the biggest moment of the week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think um, I think that was the biggest moment. And then, uh, but like you said, I it's they have such a stacked um, schedule for the next several weeks. This was kind of like, this feels like a go-home show for the next month worth of programming. You know <laughs> no what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's... Because, granted, like it's it's weird they're doing. Well, it's not really weird, but they're doing. I think like four pay per views a year. 
So you have to still put on big feeling uh, shows, like weekly shows. It just turns out we're being spoiled. And for like, I think like two or three weeks in a row, we've got huge matches lined up. Because we already said it earlier. We got the tag team uh, battle royal next week. The cage match is next week. Um, Jeff Cobb and Moxley. The week after that, I think, like I said, we got Omega and Pac. Um, yep. Yeah, we get, and we're and then, and then uh, Revolutions that sun, uh, Saturday. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, to, I mean, we'll get more build with Cody over the next two yep. weeks. You know, for uh, sure. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, if he beats Wardlow, which pretty much, pretty sure it's a safe bet, he's going to beat Wardlow. Um, yeah. He'll probably end up doing something uh, the following week, cutting some awesome yep. promos or something. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then you know, with the uh, uh, tag battle royal next week, you know, you know, we're gonna get a championship match at Revolution. You know. Yeah, Omega Whoever. and who's yep. gonna? Who do you think gonna win that battle royal? <sighs> That's a hard one, man. It's gotta like, be a heel tag team. Who who's got history right now with Omega and and Hangman? The only thing that I could think, and I know they're not heels. Is uh, maybe the young bucks? Because uh, like I just I f- feel like they've been building like a feud between at least the bucks and Paige. Yeah, that obviously. makes sense. It's not you so know? much a heel tag team to face Omega and uh, Hangman, but the catalyst of Hangman to turn heel on the yes. Bucks and Kenny. Yes. Okay. Yes. I that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's. If the Bucks win next week, that's a, that's what's happening. Like, that's... yeah, I, I'm I'm all for that too, man. Because like it's been a really good uh, uh, build for that too. I mean, especially like you know with last week uh, when they had that six man tag match or four man tag match, excuse me, and you know Hangman wouldn't tag in either of the Bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, like they had the confrontation, Kenny getting yep. in the middle trying to split up. Yeah, that's. I mean, we all yep. knew that there's going to be a heel turn, but that the timing, yeah, that feels like that's the right timing. You get the Bucks in there for the title match. Bucks probably beat uh, Kenny and Hangman, probably pin mm-hmm. Hangman, and then uh, Hangman just snaps on him, which that would yep. be cool to see a heel Hangman page. He, I just feel like he's going to have a hard time getting booed uh, oh, yeah. without, I mean, without like, overhauling oh, his character. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, he's he's so over right now. You know, cowboy shit, the beer drinking stuff. Yeah, what's I mean, what's I mean, he do uh, to get the crowd to boo him? He'd have to go sober, man. Start showing up. <laughs> be like sobriety would be the heel turn, man. He'd have to start going to like AA meetings, <laughs> refusing beer at ringside, and then like you know, <laughs> pull the whole condescending stuff. Yeah, yeah, that'd be jacked yeah. up, man. Wrestling's weird, I mean, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I could see, you know, him turning on, you know, Omega and the Bucks being, you know, if he does it the right way, which I'm sure he would. Yeah. Uh, being, you know, I think that would probably make people boom, you know, yeah. at least at least initially. And, you know, if he kept that kind of, uh, you know, the moment he grabs beer from animal. the crowd, though, they're just going to cheer him. You can't get booed if you're drinking People's yeah. drinks, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you can't get booed beer drinking on television. It's And crowd surfing and shit. Yeah, yeah. stone cold <laughs> ingrained that in our system. Like, yeah. on-air beer drinking's cool, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, you're totally right. You're totally right. Yeah. I, maybe he just starts stealing beer from people, though, you know? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either, man. Um, it's that's, a good show. A, I say, let's, yeah. let's, let's go ahead and wrap it up, man. That was a good show. All right. Um, Shoot, man, what do we got? You and I, we're going to do SmackDown because uh, uh, make sure to tune into that. Of course, also check out our NXT recap, which will hopefully be up, um, I probably would say, sometime Thursday or today, depending on whenever you're watching this show. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead and tune in, watch that. Check us out on SmackDown. And then Sunday night, uh, we're going to go ahead and cover TakeOver Portland. I yes. dude, all this wrestling going on. I completely forgot till today. Till you guys reminded me <laughs> that takeovers this weekend. Jesus man, Yo, hype for that too. That Hell looks yeah. sick. But um, but yeah, man. So thank you guys for joining us. And uh, once again, uh, until next time, y'all have a good one. Peace.